ಭೂತವ ಮುರತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಫಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ಪುಲಗನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓ ಮೈರಿ ಅರ್ ಬುಲವೆಡ್ ಘನ್ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅರ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಅರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತೋ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿವೈನ್ ಭಕ್ತೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲೋಯ ದಮ್ ಪರಿವಾರ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ today is our final yoga course 10 uh in english for this year now the new year but as we took as we started from august 2020 and we continued all the way till this time today our course has ended and after this course after a couple of weeks an examination will be taken so this is your course part 10 english today we're going to overview uh what's number gadara first chapter 28 after that we're going to uh examine a uh, swamini vato and finally a charitra from jew by his life so this what's number is very very important gadara pratham 28 a smoldering log progressing and regressing bhagwan swami narayan is a very very practical god and bhagwan swami narayan shows throughout his vachanamrut's practical experiences a uh, spiritual aspirant or mumukshu is going through in his day to day life bhagwan swami narayan's examination or to examine a person's inside atma and from there give the proper medicine is like no other just like how a patient would go to a doctor's office and a doctor would diagnose according to the patient's symptoms in the same way bhagwan swami narayan and his ekantik satpurush they played such a role on this earth and are playing such a role on this earth that by examining the jew or the soul's character behavior they are able to diagnose and give proper medicine and if that medicine is accepted and taken then the momukshu would be relieved from the pida or the misery of the sapaus and antakaran and this body and so on and so forth but there are many many vachanamruts but in this vachanamrut particularly bhagwan swami narayan has showed his bhaktos what is progress and what is regress in satsang but he has not stated it in one or two sentences but he has actually given very very descriptive points that if one is going through this if one is going through this then one should understand that one is progressing in satsang and is if one is going through this and if one is going through this then one should understand that one is slowly declining in satsang now examining other scriptures no other god has put so much emphasis on completely diagnosing one's own soul and finding the exact illness and diagnosing it with the proper medicine bhagwan swami narayan is such a supreme god that he has done so in a very very particular manner and a very very descriptive matter in this vachanamrut so by the grace of thakur ji maharaj by the grace of our divine guru parampara our puja guru ji and this divine loya dam parivar let's begin this vachanamrut swami narayan hare gadara first chapter 28th a smoldering log progressing and regressing anposh sud 14th samad 1876 American date December 30th 1819 Shri Ji Maharaj was sitting on a large decorated cot on the veranda outside the room 
in the line with in line with the room of Sri Vasudev Narayan and Dada Kachar's Darbar in Gadara. He was dressed entirely in white clothes. At that time, the sadhus had sat to eat in his presence. Thereupon, Sri Jamarad said, When a satsangi is likely to regress in the satsang fellowship, vicious desires steadily flourish within him. So now Bhagwan is starting to describe what are the characteristics of a person who is likely to regress or fall back in satsang. Now, regress and progress, these are two opposite words. And they go hand in hand because everything has some kind of plus and minus. There's also a saying that uh, each and every coin has two faces, right? In the same way, there's two roads to everything. Where there is good, there is bad. There's opposites to everything. Where there is light, there is also darkness on the opposite side. In the same way, in satsang, where there is regress, there can also be progress. And where there is progress, there can also be regress. Now, you know, in the world, looking in the world, progress we define as graduating from a nice university and getting a very, very good job. So, um, for example, becoming a doctor, a pharmacist, a lawyer, so on and so forth. And having a very, very high and steady income and from that buying a nice house, having a family, buying uh, nice cars and luxuries and living a very, very nice life. That is what a typical person in the world would call progress, success, let's put it in that way. And on the other hand, a person's work doesn't uh, is not working out for him, uh, very, very low income, not educated, doesn't have the luxuries that that person wants, even if that person desires. All that we consider to be regress or failure, let's put it that way. Now, Taking that example and putting it into satsang perspective, there's also dis descriptions that one can be categorized under that this person is progressing in satsang and this person is regressing in satsang. Bhagwan Swami Narayan, by his com divine compassion, has actually given us that if you read your characteristic and find, or if you listen, to your characteristic, then you would be able to find out if you're progressing in satsang or if you're regressing in satsang. So let's take a look at how Bhagwan Swaminarayan is describing regress and progress in the satsang fellowship. When a satsangi is likely to regress in the satsang fellowship, meaning decline, vicious desires steadily flourish within him. Vicious desires, desires which are, which are vicious, now, there's two types of desires. One is, you can say, pious desires, and one, is, one you can say is vicious desires. Pious desires are supposedly something that is good uh, that you want to do, that I have a desire to donate $100,000 to the temple. This is a desire, it's a type of desire, and it's pious, it's good. It's, it's going towards a good cause, um, from that money, many, many people can benefit. Many, many people can get food, clothing, etc., so on and so forth. On the other hand, a vicious desire is kind of like, uh, instead of doing mara or instead of uh, reading some vachna Ruther scriptures, let me go outside with friends and let me uh, enjoy my life. Satsang um, is okay, but what has it really given me? My friends give me happiness every day and I enjoy going out with my friends. So let me go ahead and do that. That is kind of like a vicious desire. Now, a person who is regressing or starting to decline in satsang has an increase in vicious desires. In his heart, he feels all these satsangis lack understanding and only I have true understanding. So this is the very first thought. It starts with thought. Everything 
starts with thought process and then it is slowly but surely implemented into our body language, into our actions, our karma, we can say. But a thought arises that all of these satsangis lack understanding and only I have true understanding. This is a type of aham or we can say an ignorance, a type of uh, ahankar or ego that I have these all these satsangis lack understanding lack understanding meaning i have so much understanding that it cannot be compared to anyone else now when there is such kind of comparison that's when one gets into trouble if we do not compare with any other haribhaktas and if we always think that we are below or we are very very inferior to all these bhaktas according to the vachanamrita first chapter 58 Bhagwan Swaminarayan uh, states in that Vachramrut at the end, towards the end of the Vachramrut, that how can one become a firm satsangi or a firm uh, a devotee in the satsang fellowship? Maharaj sa states that if one believes that I am inferior, meaning lower, and everyone else is superior compared to me, then one would be able to become a firm satsangi. But this kind of comparison, this kind of negative comparison, will definitely get one in trouble. Because one is seeing the negativity, and one is seeing the supremacy of oneself. Now, it is okay if one sees the negativity of oneself in the supremacy of another. But when that becomes reversed, that's when one gets into trouble and that's when one's mind starts to develop negative thoughts and starts to slowly regress. In this way, he considers himself to be superior to all. He feels that he is the greatest. He feels that there is no one like him. And that's when one starts to slowly decline or even rapidly decline in satsang because when one starts to develop ego in satsang one cannot stand another's progress nonetheless when one starts to develop some kind of uh, status in satsang and believes that I am very very great in short one uh, is kind of like digging one's own grave because Satsang is all about becoming a das. Satsang is all about becoming very, very humble. And if we completely reject that type of character sway uh, of becoming humble and we pick up ego and put it inside of our heart, then that will definitely damage us and slowly but surely throw us out of satsang. Nishkura and Swami a very, very high prominent Sadguru in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya in the time of Sriji Maharaj has written Nishkuran Kavya, which is a, a, a scripture which is compiled of uh, books, 22 books in particular, small books, and then it's, it's made into one scripture which is called Nishkuran Kavya. Now this book inside has a, a, a one particular book which is... A, Swami wrote, uh, it's called Chosat Padi, and it's uh, more focused towards santos. And from there, uh, there's an example that Swami gives, is that in the ocean, whales, whales live there. They're very, very massive mammals, uh, the most massive mammals on earth. And they live there in the ocean, in the middle of the ocean. But when the whale dies, the ocean throws the whale's carcass outside, meaning slowly but surely after the whale dies, it, it slowly but surely goes out, 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 and goes to the sea, seashore side, anywhere. This is what happens. In the same way, one who develops ego in satsang, no matter how great that person is, no matter how many qualities that person has, no, mo no matter how how you can say uh, great that person is in doing many, many different kinds of skillful activities and arts. If that person develops ego and does not want to solve that ego or does not want to take that ego out and wants to become more and more great 
through his ego, and then slowly but surely the satsang fellowship will wash that person out of a satsang. And that person will not be able to remain in satsang. And, and, and we've seen this in Maharaj's time, Raghunath Das, Kiri Sakhi, Purnanand Swami. We've seen all these examples and Bhagwan has given such examples so that the devotees of the future can understand and live such a life where they would not get or encounter such kind of obstacles. Because on the path of God, there are many, many obstacles. Whoever is not walking on the path of God, there is no obstacles for that person. That person is slowly but surely will enjoy the world and live a life and die. That's it. There is nothing for that person. So that person doesn't have any value. But in the eyes of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, in the eyes of the Ekantik Satpurush, in the eyes of Santo and Bhakto and this Parivar, those who become Das, those are true heroes, and those heroes actually hold much, much value in satsang. Even if they don't know anything, even if they have little skills, even if they do not know how to read or write or do anything, it doesn't matter. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan's measuring tape for greatness, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's measuring tape for a person who is superior is not according to his skills and abilities, but it is according to his qualities of Nirmani Panu, Das Panu, Mahima, Prem, all these, but along with all these, always there in a stagnant position, keeping that Das Panu. Meaning, for example, suppose I have the quality of Mahima, I have the quality of Seva, but if I think that there is no one like me that has Mahima, there is no one like me that does Seva, then that again is rigorous. But even if one has such qualities, one still believes and knows that I am nothing. All these qualities are due to my Ekantik Satpurush. All of these qualities are due to this Divine Guru Parampara. All of these qualities are due to Thakurji Maharaj, Pivira Gansham Maharaj. Then no problems would occur. No obstacles would come. And if obstacles did come, then just like how in the Olympics a hurdler is able to jump through those obstacle gates and hurdle one's way. One would, able, one would easily be able to jump over those obstacles and keep going on the path of, of attaining Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurusha's Rajipu. So therefore, it is very, very important to know that even if one has good qualities, more better, much better, is to stay humble. And because compared to the world, there's many, many people in the world who have good skills, who are very, very talented, who can do many, many things. But due to lacking this one quality, they are not in Bhagwan's vision. And if we do not hold this quality of Daspunu, then we will also be thrown out of Bhagwan's vision. That's why it's very, very important to keep this quality in mind. Such a person remains constantly uneasy day and night. Constantly. Just like how someone um, may be walking and, and, and if there was a centipede inside of one's clothes, how uneasy would one become? One would start jumping up and down. One would start to remove one's clothes, trying to find what that insect is, where it is. One would not be able to live or do anything even if one had one million dollars in uh, a, a check of one million dollars inside of one's pocket for one, that person all one was going to the bank and uh, going to register or deposit that money very very happily and if a centipede would come and slowly come inside of one's body how uneasy would one become one would forget the million dollars. One would, one's mind focus would be completely on removing that centipede, becoming far from that centipede, and coming back at ease. But in the case of such a person who is regressing in satsang, he remains constantly uneasy, day and night, constantly. 
constantly he feels that, you know, uh, why am I not being cherished? Why am I not being valued? You know, why is not, uh, why am I not getting attention? Due to that, he regresses. He cannot sit peacefully anywhere during the day, nor can he sleep at night. Look at all, look at when one's mind becomes upset, when one's mind becomes stable, unstable. Look at the characteristics that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is showing us that one cannot even sit peacefully. No matter how hot it is outside, 100 degrees, and we have a room inside with nice AC, with a nice couch, very, very good food to eat. But if our mind is upset, if our mind is unstable, we would still be uneasy. We would still not, we would still not be able to sit peacefully. Even if people outside are suffering from 100 degrees Fahrenheit, due to the lack of facilities and we have facilities and we are actually indulging in those facilities with nice AC, nice food, nice lavish drinks. It's still not possible to attain peace because one's mind is unstable and uneasy. Similarly, this disease in the form of uh, cancer, we can say, in the form of cancer, in the form of this ego, is kind of like this. No matter if we have everything, we cannot become stable, we cannot remain stable, we remain uneasy, and due to that, we are slowly declining in satsang. And we slowly do decline in satsang. Moreover, his anger never subsides. In fact, he constantly smolders like a half-burnt log. You know, these nun santos, they titled this Vachnamrut the smoldering log, progressing and regressing. And this very point comes that his anger never subsides. He is always he always remains angry. He always feels like uh, you know that um, you know I should be valued, I should be cherished. <laughs> and nonetheless, whoever he has uh, encounters or whoever he talks with, there's always some kind of anger that he displays to that person. Uh, making him even more uneasy. He is constantly smolder, smolders like a half-burnt log. A person who behaves in this manner should be known to be on the verge of falling out of satsang. On the verge. He has not fallen out of satsang, but he is on the verge. He is very, very close to falling out of satsang. No matter how many days he spends in satsang, he will ex never experience peace in his heart. Ultimately, he will fall from satsang. So if one does not solve this issue, one will fall from satsang. Bhagwan has given this statement, it can never go wrong. But what is our prevention plans? How can we never go down this road? How can we stay away from this obstacle? It is the very, very important solution that we have to find today. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan is so kind that he... He doesn't give only one side, but he also gives a second side. And from that second side, if we take those points and capture them into our life and implement them into our life, then we would also be easily able to, again, progress in satsang, even if we are regressing. Kind of take a U-turn. So let's take a look at that. Conversely, when a person is likely to regress in or progress in satsang, pure desires steadily flourish within him. Pure desires. Now, what are pure desires? That's what we want to know. What are pure desires? Well, pure desires is pure desires is one's ability to do seva. Pure desires is one's ability to help out one. Pure, de pure desires is to actually help uh, one, uh, not oneself, but pure desires is to actually do more bhajan. Such kind of pure desires one steadily has, one, and that person can be considered to flourish. Day by day, he sees only virtues in all those satsangis. This is the main characteristic. In the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swaminarayan points out so many facts regarding swabhaos, regarding 
tatwa gnan regarding different different uh, even the viewpoints of the satpurush and joining with the satpurush but the most you can say vivid point that sticks out in the vachanamrut is progressing in satsang is by taking the qualities the good qualities of others and by taking the negative qualities of oneself and improving and improvising this is such an important fact that Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself has stated this the most in the Vachanamrut. And even in this Vachanamrut, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has stated that this is what he wants us to do. So day by day, he, the formula is right here itself. Day by day, he sees only virtues in all of the satsangis. Now, seeing virtues in satsangi, what, if, one has to, if one wants to do this, then one needs to feel and understand that one is the most inferior amongst everyone else. Only one who understands and knows that one is the smallest in satsang is able to take the good qualities of others because automatically one's ego is kind of becoming, uh, you can say, pushed. One's ego is becoming crushed. And due to that, if that happens, then one can take good qualities of others. But if one does not have that kind of, then one is thrown out of satsang, automatically. He views all devotees as superior to him and considers himself to be insignificant. He feels that all these devotees are superior and considers himself to be insignificant. Just like how that point in the Vajnamruka Dada, first chapter 58, that we just reviewed. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan also takes that point and gives it to us here in, an, in a different statement. And this can only happen, Bhakto, by developing Mahima for Thakurji Maharaj, our Guru Parampara, our Puja Satpurush, our Puja Guruji, and all these Bhaktos in Loyadam Parivar. If that happens, the Mahima of all these four components, then one would be able to take good qualities. Now you're probably wondering, how can Mahima happen? How can I develop more maima for these four components? Well, it's only possible. It's only possible if one is able to understand that I am small. These are all great, great components. Think about how Bhagwan's greatness is. Bhagwan is able to create this whole universe. Bhagwan is able to create this earth. Yet Bhagwan is staying hidden behind the curtain, and we do one small thing. Yet we feel that we are the greatest, we, there is no one like us. That is something that will not help us progress in satsang. Nonetheless, Bhagwan's greatness is there. Our Guru Parampara, our Adi Guru, Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami. Such a Sant that he stayed Das, he stayed humble throughout his whole life. He never became someone in the spotlight yet. Today, everyone remembers him for his saintliness. Today, everyone remembers him for his humility. Today, everyone remembers him for his Guru Bhakti. Today, everyone remembers him for the faith he had and has in Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And today, everyone remembers him for the wonderful gifts that he has given or the contributions that he has given us in this Satsang Fellowship. Due to that, Muktan Swami is and always will be someone that is a role model in this Swaminarayan Sampradaya and we are very fortunate as Loyadam Parivar Yuvaks and Kishores that we have received or we are in such a Guru Parampara meaning a lineage that Adi Guru Muktan Swami is there on the top and until that slowly but surely Muktan Swami, Adaran Swami, Haripriya Swami, Vekun Dasi Swami Narayan Swarup Dasi Swami, our Dada Guruji Nan Kishor Dasi Swami, and our Puja Guruji, Pragat, who is right now here on this earth, is guiding us and slowly giving us the perfect and essential knowledge for us to attain Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Moreover, he experiences the bliss of satsang in his heart 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day, he is happy, happy, and happy. Why? because of this very component that he feels that he is the lowest 
and he feels that everyone else is the greatest compared to him. Due to that, bliss automatically occurs uh, or experience, is experienced 24 hours a day. Such, such characteristics indicate that pure desires have flourished. In fact, the more such a person practices satsang, the more he benefits and eventually he attains profound greatness. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying is not saying that if Bhagwan, if one spins one thousand maras, one will attain greatness. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is not saying that if one does one thousand dandvats, one will attain profound greatness. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying that practically, if you live a life according to my standards of these four points that I just put out, then one will attain profound greatness in satsang. So Bhagwan's mathematics is different and our mind's mathematics is different. All we have to do is let go of our mind's mathematics and accept Bhagwan's mathematics, Bhagwan's Ekantik Satpurush's mathematics, and slowly but surely attain profound greatness in satsang. Having delivered this discourse, Sri Jamar bids Jay Sachidanan to all and returned to his seat. This ends the Vachanamrut Gadada, first chapter 28th. Moving on to the next Vachanamrut, Swami Nivato. Moving on to the next uh, component, Swami Nivato. As one develops spiritual knowledge, one comes to know the greatness and glory of God even more so. To illustrate this, Swami gave an example. A shepherd was walking and he found a diamond, which he tied around his goat's neck. Then a merchant bought the goat along with the diamond and sold the diamond for 200 rupees to another. This man then sold it for 1,000 rupees and then it was ordered for 10,000 rupees. In this way, the diamond's value increased and was sold for 100,000 rupees. This person then went to a trader and asked, do you want to buy this diamond? After assessing the diamond, the trader said, bring a, a hundred laborers and take away all the money you can carry away from my treasury between sunrise and sunset. The townspeople were stunned that the trader had bought, the townspeople were stunned that the trader had bought that you have paid so much. The trader replied, I have bought this diamond. The father looked at him and commented, you've got it for free. You've not paid even one, one day's worth of income. So you see, all of these people, the trader can be said to have the most accurate knowledge of the true worth of that diamond. It is the same with the glory of God. As one's knowledge of God's glory increases, one's understanding of His glory increases. To illustrate this, he, he had the Vachnamrut Sarangpur 17th read. Then after Vasudev Hare, he was shouted and it was shouted and Swami went to take his meal. But um, Sadguru Gunatitan Swami talks about the Mahima of God and how a diamond's value can be compared to nothing else. In the same way, the glory of God can be compared to nothing else. I'm reminded of the Kohinoor diamond, which is a diamond um, that is in the crown of the Queen of England currently. That diamond came from India and now is the property of England, is embedded in the crown of the Queen. And that diamond's value in this world is considered to be priceless. There is no value. And we had the darshan of Pyuda Gansha Maharaj here during Diwari Utsav that also wore that diamond and had that uh, jewel inside of, encrusted inside of the crown. And that very, you can say diamond, even if it's not a true diamond, but due to having the contact of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, that diamond's price is priceless, we can say. That diamond is that diamond's worth is priceless. But saying that, 
Sadhguru Gunathitan Swami gives such kind of greatness and from there explains us that one should accept and understand the true glory of the Ekanti Satpurush and Bhagwan Swaminarayan to progress in satsang. And finally, a charitra of Jivuba of, in, of Gadara was illustrated in this talk that you would be able to, uh, in this uh, lecture that you would be able to pick up on and read. So this, is, this ends and marks our last course of this year, UA course 10, part 2. English is officially over. The examination will take place in the near future. Everything will be announced. But saying this, if anyone needs any material for the UA course, it would be also in our Luedam Parivar WhatsApp groups. Nonetheless, you'd be, uh, if you would be kind enough to email us at loyadamng at the rate gmail.com, you'd also be able to receive this course. Saying this, please study the course. If you're in the Gujarati department, it's the same, but just translated. It's this material that we just went through. There's 10 total courses, um, and there will be a total of 100 questions um, in this examination. If you have any questions, you know where to find us. The next course will again continue or will, will be uh, restarted in February um, 2021. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan.